of Restoration. My name is Bryce Owens. I'm the pastor. I want to welcome our visitors today and coming out here and joining us for our services. And, uh, it's going to be a great day today. We've already had the kids' lesson, and that was a great time. They were learning about Nathan, and I love Nathan. He is a fun guy to study, and uh, what he did with David. So uh, it's been uh, good so far, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to open our Bibles to the book of Luke. Huh? The clicker's not up there. That's why I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Right there. I'm sorry, to the book of uh, Mark. We're going to be in Mark. Mark chapter 5. So far, I guess we do things a little differently here at Restoration. So typically, uh, when you go to a church service uh, and you get started, they always uh, have a time of song. Then they take up offerings. Then you sing some more songs. And then you dive into the service. Um, so here we actually get started with preaching of the word first, because we believe that, oh, I try to hold to what this Bible right here says, and uh, so we preach first to get our hearts right, and then we go into our song service as we lift praises up to God, and so that way our hearts are right before we can sing the hymn. So uh, go ahead and open your Bible to Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 21, Mark 5, 21. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And it says this, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, Life at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. Turn him about in the press. In other words, Jesus turned around and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy pleasure. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And Lord, I just want to thank you for who you are. And God, I want to thank you for this story of Jesus that we are reading. And God, as we, as we study it, I pray that you reveal to us what it means to have a good countenance. And Lord, your countenance towards us means so much. Lord, your countenance can, can cause us to either live truly for you or can cause us to be fearful of you and not want to live at all. Lord, I pray that you use me, empty my mind out. Let me be able to feed your sheep today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There's my buddy right there. <laughs> As I read this story, I, I was thinking about my own life. I was thinking about how as fathers, even as mothers, as, as parents, we can have an influence on our children in a positive or a negative way. We can, we can do things that will build our kids up. Or we can do things that will tear them down. 
I was sitting there thinking about Matthias. I'm going to embarrass you for a little bit, buddy. And just recently, you know, I have a new iPhone, and mine broke, and it was all messed up, and I had password protected, and he had one of the passwords, and I said, Matthias, I need you to put this in so that way we can erase the whole thing and send it back, and he was like, I can't remember it. Man, I was like, what do you mean you can't remember it? He tried to put it Yeah, yeah, I can't remember it. I was like, are you serious? And I remember my demeanor, my attitude. I was like, why can't you remember the password? Matthias, how did you feel? Yeah. Scared. Embarrassed. Embarrassed. He was terrified. He didn't know what to do. He goes, my daddy's going to kill me. I was probably this close to doing it. I'm like, you had one simple thing. Remember a password. You had to remember before. You put it in many times, and all of a sudden, he forgot it. Man, I was so frustrated. But you can see the look on his face. You can see that he was just, ah, I just don't know. My demeanor towards my son right then could build him up. Or could tear him down. And I can safely say, and I'm going to trust and be transparent, I didn't do the best job of building him up at that moment. I kind of failed. But then I'm reminded of another story while we were back at our Milford house. We were getting that fixed up, trying to sell to go out to Blanchester to serve at Woodville. And <clears throat> we sat there and I was doing some siding work. I remember I was working all day. I was sweaty. I was hot. I was red. And I remember I was working on this piece of siding, and I could not do this thing to stay up on the house. I was doing everything. I was trying to pull the siding out, trying to get it lashed underneath, and I was just getting really irritated. And I remember it dropped, and I was just getting so angry, and I was like, oh! And then I, I remember I bent down, and all of a sudden I hear this whap up against the house. And I'm like, what was that? I looked down, there's this big old stick that slammed up against the house. Big. And I turn around and I see Matthias over there on the other side of the fence, like this. And he had been taking it and going like this and swinging back and forth. And just so happened, it broke off. He was scared to death. I remember I looked at him and I could feel rage building up. I'm like, man, what are you doing, son? And I just looked and he was so scared. And I could see the terror on his face. And he was about, what, five then? No, six, seven? I mean, he was younger. Time just flies by. And when I saw the terror in his face, I had a choice. I could either, what, yell at you and be like, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that and flinging sticks around and poke somebody's eye out. Or I could just love on him. And I remember I looked at him. He was scared to death. Tears swelling in his eyes. And I just looked at him and I said, Matthias. And he goes, yeah. Nothing. It's all right. You do fall. And I just laughed. I just started laughing. And then all of a sudden, you know what he started doing? He started laughing. Our countenance changes the way people react and changes the way that our children behave. Just like God's countenance towards us changes how we live for him. You see, we sit there and we, we look at God and we think he's this, he is, he's an all-powerful being. He's God. He's the great I am. That encompasses everything who he is. The great I am. The one who created everything. The heavens and the earth. He created you and I. He knows every hair on your head. And you know what? He can do anything he wants. If he took our pinky off of us, we could just, who knows what would happen. And we can fear him when we sin. We think, man, I, I've messed up. God doesn't want to use me anymore. I look at David. You guys are studying the life of David. And you know what? David did some bad things, didn't he, guys? David sinned. David messed up. And if I was David, I'd be like, man, why would God want to use me for anything? Why would God want to use me as a pastor? Why would God want to use me in a church as a leader? Why would God want to do anything with me? I struggle with my sin every day. Why would God want me? That's our countenance. That's our demeanor. We think because we struggle with sin, we struggle with issues that God doesn't want to use us. We think God wants nothing to do with us because we're, we're nasty and gross. And then, you know, what we start doing, we think, well, I want to go back to church. I want to get back and, and, and fellowship with people. But because I've got all this sin in my life, I've got to clean myself up first. I've got to look all nice and I've got to get rid of this garbage in my life before I can go back to God. Before I can go back with those people. But that's not what Jesus wants. Countenance is important. And I want to prove to you today. By using God's word. That when you look at his countenance towards you. You can live a life full. You can live a life abundant. And you can live a life free. From the bondage of sin. Let's go back to our text here. In verse 21. It says this, when Jesus was passed over again, 
by ship onto the other side. Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years. I'm going to stop right here. Numbers are important in the Bible. And this account is in every single gospel. Did you know that? And it kind of words it a little differently, but it goes through. The number 12 is important. The number 12 represents new government. As here, we have this man who had a daughter. You know how old his daughter was? Anyone want to take a guess? 12. And he arrives on the, on the shore with his boys and his, his what disciples? His 12 wow. disciples. And then all of a sudden, this woman who had an issue of blood, how many years? 12. 12. There's an importance here, church. You know what God's trying to say? We got something new coming to town. We got a new way of doing something. We got a new way of relating to you. I can say God never changes. He doesn't. He never changes. But how he relates to us does. You see, Jesus here, he's saying, hey, I'm the new guy in town, and we're going to change the way we do things. Okay? There was somebody else in the Bible, and I love reading it, They had a new way of trying to do things, but he was still in an old school time. Let's go back to Exodus. Do we have it up here? Exodus chapter 33. Go to Exodus chapter 33. And we're going to be in verse 18. Exodus 33 and verse 18. 3318. And it says this. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now this is Moses speaking to God. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. This is God now. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand. And thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. You see Moses here, he's like, God, I want to see your glory. Now Moses is back in the Old Testament. He's leading Israel out, out and they're out in the wilderness. He got them out of Egypt. God used him. And now Moses is like, hey, I want to see your glory. I want to see it. But God's looking at Moses and he goes, listen, Moses, I love you. You're a little before your time. I got, I'm not going to be doing that for a little while when I send my son. But I tell you what, you can't see my face. No, no man can. You're going to die. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to push in the, in, in the cliff of a rock. I'm going to walk by. I'm going to cover your, your face up. Because you can't see my, 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 my face, my front parts. I'm going to walk by. And when I pass by, then you can see my back parts. So I just imagine him just going, all right, here it is. Can you imagine if I preach backwards? <laughs> How would that be? That, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? You just I'd be like, hey, all right. But that's what God was doing. He's like, you can't see this. So Moses is like, all right, I'll take what I can get. So Moses is looking at the back part of God. That's all he gets. But Moses wanted more. Moses wanted, he wanted the full thing. But God said, not yet. You can't. You're going to die if you do that. See, that was God's countenance then. He goes, you can't have this. Moses is like, but I want it. But this is all I get. Now let's go back to Mark. Let's go back to Mark. Mark chapter 5. So we can see that the old way of relating, the old way of doing things was through the law. You see, Moses had taken the Ten Commandments and all the law, and he gave them to all of Israel. 
They had all the sacrifices that they had to, to, to have to, for all their sin. 